In the beginning, the very beginning, there was darkness, then a fracturing of symmetry. One force becomes four, then there was electromagnetism, and only then could there be light, some of which would condense to become something like quarks and gluons, which in turn become protons and electrons, and all of this within a millionth of our hypothetical universe's first ever second. And in the next three minutes, cosmic expansion reduces the energy density, lowering the temperature to a chilly one billion Kelvin. Electrons cannot combine with nuclei to make the first true atoms. It won't be cool enough for that to happen for another half a million years. But let's fast forward nine billion years to long after the gas clouds have collapsed to form galaxies and during which generations of stars have lived and died and a planet and a stable star have formed from the debris a planet where the laws of physics have had time to maneuver particles by constant action into every pore of possibility bonding growing breaking recombining parts ever changing until after another 500 million years a self-replicating molecule forms. Light. Energy to atoms to beings made of atoms made of energy. 4,000 million years of constant change later, intelligence emerges. And these energy beings, puzzled by all that they see, want to understand where they came from. They look at their bodies and they see imperfection. They look at their world and they see energy, repetition, variation, patterns, complexity, surely the signature of a maker. So they look for gods, but they only find their own words. So they look deeper and see chaos, and then patterns within the chaos, patterns coming from the chaos. They see it in sound waves, pressure waves, vibration, oscillation, in light, in gravity, electricity, in physics, chemistry and biology. Wherever forces meet in harmony, shapes emerge, patterns in order from chaos, waves in phase, crossing, pausing on their way towards chaos again one day. They look closer and find numbers beneath the chaos. Simple rules everywhere. The energy beings have finally noticed that numbers are the key to understanding their universe. But why should it be like this? they ask. And then they discover that they live in a quantized universe where matter and force can only exist as units of identical size which can therefore be calculated, predicted to 11 decimal places. Their universe is rational. Equations balance. And of all the things of which they could have been made, of all the things they'd feared they might find, they discover that they were made of the purest energy, in a state of emergent physical harmony, an unwavering insistence by their universe that they must exist, like patterns in mathematical chaos. They were still just animals. They were still just chemicals, but before all of that, they were once a blinding flash of light, to the best of their knowledge, they exist simply because their existence is possible. Now the question is, what makes you think you're not living in that universe right now? How would you know? How would you know? No test you could carry out here, no observation you could make here would look any different there. You wouldn't be able to tell between the universe I described and the one you're living in. Worse still, every scientific experiment you could currently conduct here will only confirm that you are a being made of harmonic energy living in a deceptively simple universe. If you think this all sounds like new age nonsense, then you have to tell me where I can find an E that does not equal an MC squared, or an MA without a corresponding and exactly proportionate and measurable F. And if all this doesn't sound like the universe your God made, then it's fair to say that it sounds like your God didn't make this universe. It doesn't mean an intelligence wasn't involved, say, in the fracturing of the superforce at the very beginning. It just means that you are almost certainly giving thanks to the wrong thing. With everything that has happened since the first flash, 
being explicable by a billion small natural steps why postulate one supernatural leap at the very beginning nothing in science will ever tell you there wasn't a creator the possibility of a multiverse might even give you an answer to where that creator came from but maybe we have to let go of the promise of immortality to truly feel alive here and now to value each other now to properly appreciate what we have maybe it's part of growing up or it was before people started making promises that nothing could keep maybe in the future we won't mess up our kids from the start by telling them myths are true maybe we'll tell them other magical stories about how walls that look like they'll stand forever can fall overnight and how with the whole world watching a Chinese man carrying his shopping once just for a few moments became more than a human being why live in constant shame as a fallen sinner an unworthy a second-class being why even try to believe that when you could learn enough about the universe in just a few books to look in the mirror each morning and know that your family tree goes all the way back to light itself and all you have to do to see it is let go Fear is falling away.